Hey guys, it's Caleb from Brickloaf, and today we're going to look at some of the things you can expect in the Star Wars, Harry Potter, Marvel, and City Advent calendars for this year, as well as looking at a few of the Wicked Brick stands we've got, and finally finishing up by looking at our winter village we've been building. We're not going to be looking at every single build and every character, but the Star Wars, Harry Potter, and Guardians of the Galaxy Advent calendar cost $44.99 on the LEGO website. And then the City Advent Calendar costs $34.99 on the LEGO website. All of them come with six figures except for Harry Potter which comes with seven. And continuing off of last year, they did try to do the same board game feel. I think they tried to play on it more this time because all the characters, all the builds come on a 2x4 base and none of the micro builds have the opportunity to be used in something like our Harry Potter Village because they're all just really small. Now for the figures, this is the same Harry Potter that came in the Chamber of Secrets last year. The Moaning Myrtle, the Sirius Black Nymphadora Tonks, uh, those are all new clothing pieces, primarily just torsos. Same thing with Neville, we've seen all of his pieces except for his torso before. I believe it's just the head on Voldemort that's new to this set. The Snape has appeared in two other sets, and then if you want to count the Slughorn, that head and hairpiece was the same one used in the Astronomy Tower set. Now with all that in mind, these figures are pretty cool and most of them are unique ones you wouldn't get in an average set usually. So if you want these figures, this would be a good idea to buy this advent calendar. However, if you've gotten these figures from the mystery series, the either series one or two, we've seen these in some shape before. And so it's just a little bit too much money for figures we have seen before. Next up we're going to look at the City Advent Calendar and I actually think that this is one of the best ones this year considering its price and what it includes. So the set came with six figures and they're all pretty unique except Santa which you usually get one of those in every city set. But the bellhop is really cool, there's the guy who's wearing the fish apron. I really love the kid who's got the propeller hat, I think that's really awesome, I love that piece. And you've got a lot of toys like a rocking horse, a train. It also came with some animal stuff like a miniature horse and a chicken. And most of these are things that you can kind of insert into the city uh, as you want to. It's more useful than the Harry Potter one as far as putting it in what we have. I do like this one more than last year's because last year's was building, you know, like an ambulance and then building the hospital. And they were all very small and you can't really do anything with those. I like how these are at least toys or small little stands that you can use somewhere. And so for the price, the figures, and the builds, I would say that this is actually a really good advent calendar this year. Next up is the Star Wars advent calendar, and this one's a little rough. I would say that the figures are probably what carry this set, though even that's a little bit questionable. So first the battle droid, this is the same battle droid that comes in every other battle droid set. The Clone Commander is the same one that came in this set, the UCS Gunship, and the Clone Battle Pack. The Hoth Trooper is the same one that we've seen in the Battle Pack and the at, -AT and all that. The Luke Skywalker came as part of the Micro Fighter set with the Tauntaun. And then as far as new pieces, same figures, the Darth Vader and the C-3PO are the same pieces we've seen on those figures before, except for the torsos, which are unique to this set. R2-D2 even has a unique torso, we've seen the legs and head elsewhere, but this one is a holiday sweater torso that's unique to this character. And then the only truly unique figure, questionably, is the Santa Gonk build, which I think is really cool. I like how they included the Gonk droid and I like how they made it into the Santa figure because, you know, every Star Wars calendar or every calendar in general has to typically have some sort of Santa callback. And so I like how they did that for the Gonk droid. The builds are all right. The micro fighter builds are as good as they usually are. I never really have a complaint with any of the fighters that they build. It's typically the things like the cave and the ammo rack and things like that, the smaller, uh, supposed to look like their landscapes that are kind of all right. Uh, I think the ammo rack, this one, the Imperial one that's in between the TIE Fighter and the Hoth Trooper is much worse than the one we got last year. But I do like how they kind of disperse the themes. So you have some newer ships that we've seen in the TV shows recently. And you've got some that were sets we've gotten released recently. And then you've got a lot of Hoth ones as well. I really like the AT, ST, and the laser cannon builds. All in all, it's a really decent Star Wars advent calendar set. I think if you are a Star Wars Lego collector, you're really going to want that C-3PO, that R2-D2, and that Darth Vader. 
And finally is the Guardians of the Galaxy Advent Calendar. This one was released to coincide with the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special that's going on in Disney+. Plus. Now this Advent Calendar actually has one of the most unique figure selections of the Advent Calendars this year. So Mantis and Rocket Raccoon are the same ones that came in the Guardian ship that came out in 2021. But the Drax head and torso is unique to this set. The Nebula head and torso is unique to this set. The Groot did appear in the Guardian ship as well. This one's got a neck bracket on because there's stuff on his back, but it's the same figure other than that. And then the Star-Lord this year is only a unique torso. But these figures are all really cool because you've got two with really cool head molds. You've got Mantis with their hair piece that's pretty rare. And then Drax and Nebula both have really cool printing and detail on the front and back of their heads. And the builds aren't bad either. You've got micro fighters of things that appeared in the series. You've got simple things you can actually set up and display if you do want to put them throughout like a Star Wars area or something because it's spacey. You've got weapon racks, a table, weapons for rocket. You've got a Thanos armor snowman, a candy cane, some presents, and you've even got a speaker and a Walkman too. And to top it all off, most sets have a tree and you are able to, with that neck bracket on Groot's back, put a leaf on his back and turn him into the tree. If you like to collect Marvel, then you'll probably want to add this set to your collection, and I have to say this is much better than the advent calendar from last year. Next up, our order from Wicked Brick came in, and we had ordered this a long time ago, several months back, and we finally got all of them in at one time. And just some of the sets that we got stands for are the Haunted Mansion miniature, the Disney 50th Castle miniature, the Ghost, Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle, Grievous's Starship, the Special Forces TIE Fighter, the Justifier, and Luke's X-Wing. These stands are usually pretty easy to assemble. They've got some information about the set, like a picture, a piece count, and the set number. There's an area for figures to stand if it comes with figures, and sometimes they even include a background like in this one. And they're just really good ways of displaying your favorite pieces if you want to show them off. And they also protect them from things like dust. You don't have to worry about cleaning all those small little parts. If you've watched our videos in the past, then you know that we've bought from them before. We really enjoy their stands. They're really nice ways of organizing and keeping the sets protected that you like a lot. And they really work for the Star Wars sets because they help lift the usually fighters off of the ground so they're not sitting on their wings like with this TIE fighter here. And sometimes they're curved so it looks like they're, you know, fighting or in motion. And I really like how they let the set kind of take on this character and you can display the figures right in front of it. I really love the Star Wars ones especially. And finally I want to show you our winter village area we've been working on this year. We've tried to take some holiday sets and blend them in with some regular ones and try to make it look like one big holiday scene. We've even got some of the smaller sets put off to the side. And we're still putting a few pieces here and there but there's a lot of different details and easter eggs throughout and I'm going to let you guys take a look.
I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot to cover. We've been so busy recently, but if you did enjoy it, please leave a like, comment down below what you think, and subscribe if you want to see more.